What's going on, everybody? Uh, gonna do a little quick review right here because I was out, you know, just smoking a cigar. Wasn't planning on doing a review, but I figured, what the heck? I got nothing better to do, and this is a pretty good cigar. I want to tell you about it. Okay, what it is? It is the Tatuaje. Okay, it is the um, Tobacconist Association of America, the TAA, 2014. Got a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. Nicaraguan binder and filler, and that's all I could find out about it, okay? Triple cap, closed foot, uh, box press, Toro, 6x52. Uh, really good cigar, okay? Started off with, uh, started off with a uh, black pepper, earthy, with a slightly coffee hint to it. Very powerful um, from the startup because of that closed foot. Um, as it worked its way into the The uh, first third, the coffee flavor became uh, pretty prominent. The smoke got sweet and it picked up a chocolatey note, like a milk chocolatey note. So it's like a creamy, chocolate, earthy, peppery smoke. Um, it's probably about what I expected before I even uh, smoked it. So anyway i don't know what you guys are doing this evening it's a saturday night i was just sitting in there watching uh hand rolled okay hand rolled a documentary about the cigar industry um a little bit where it comes from and how it got to where it is now and where it's how it's you know where it's going to be going forward and one of the big things that they touched on was the um the fda regulation that I think we, you know, you've probably, you've probably heard about it. Oh, I'm drinking a beer tonight, Yangling. Not a very good pairing, but I mean, it doesn't, it, it works. It's not bad. Anyway, uh, I, I've seen it and I generally don't pay attention to stuff like that. I'm not in the business of cigars. I don't make my money in cigars. So generally government regulations on it, I'm 42 years old. I ain't worried about how old I got to be to buy them. And I'm not worried about, you know, generally, although I do believe if you can sign up and go to war for your country, you should be able to uh, uh, drink beer. You should be able to smoke whatever the hell you want. You're an adult at that point. But I'm 42 years old. I'm already past that point. It doesn't concern me none. So I generally just let the people that are in the business of making money worry about the regulations and stuff like that. But this documentary was an eye opener for me because it will affect me. Okay, it's not, it's, it's, it's so stupid, you know, and I'm going to try to sum it up as quickly as I can and not bore you, but this is interesting. I think everybody needs to know it because we need to figure out what we as consumers can do about it. Okay, once you figure out how it's going to affect you, um, now if you're one of those guys that just smoke one cigar, you got your brand, you know, you smoke My Father, La Bijou's, and that's it, or Monte Cristo number twos, and you buy a box every month and that's it, then you ain't really going to care either. Okay, but if you're like me and like most of the people that I know, okay, we're not brand loyal people, okay? We're not like cigarette smokers that smoke Marlboros or Paul Malls or Lucky Strikes. We, you know, we go to the, the, the cigar store and we come back with five, five cigars and from five different brands, all right, five different makers, okay? Uh, so what this FDA regulation is, is basically gonna do is it's gonna freaking cut out a lot of these small companies Okay, because the money they're going to have to pay to put all of this, you know, uh, uh, labeling on the boxes, which is going to destroy the boxes. They're just going to be, might as well be cardboard at that point with all those stickers and pictures of, you know, lungs. They already do it in Europe. I got a box of Cohibas from France and I had to take a hair dryer and get all those damn stickers off of it because I like to keep my boxes. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people do. But it's not just that, it's the money they gotta spend. So if a, if a, if a factory's only putting out, say J.C. Newman, I, I think it was J.C. Newman, they're putting out 30 million, uh, they're making $30 million a year, uh, okay? Uh, they're gonna have to spend 40 million to keep up with this crap, so they're gonna go out of business, okay? Or they're gonna have to cut back so much to where they're only gonna be, be producing like, you know, core line cigars, okay? So the big guys might survive it, but, they'll survive only to the point where brand loyal smokers are because I am not a, I'm an avid cigar smoker, okay? I smoke three, four, sometimes five, this is my third cigar today. Um, and they're all been, this is a Tatuaje. Earlier I smoked AJ Fernandez 
And before that, what did I smoke? Huh, man, I can't even remember which one it was. Huh, don't you hate when that happens? Anyway, I, you know, I, like, last night I smoked a Kristoff. You know, so I, I'm not brand loyal. And this is a limited run. And what this regulation is going to do is make the companies, before they put out a new line of cigars, they're going to have to submit it to the FDA for approval to make sure that the packaging is okay and that the, the, the ingredients are this and that. And you're talking about a year to years to get this cigar out. And right now, cigar companies, to keep up with what we want, they got to put out like a vintage series. That's got to hit the market now. You know, they got them. They spend all that money producing it. They got to get it on the market. They can't have it tied up in, in blue bureaucratic tape for three years. They'll stop doing it. Okay. And when that's going to happen, it's going to make people stop smoking cigars. People are not going to get uh, newcomers into cigars. Okay. They're not going to develop the, the palate and the, the want if they only go in and they got you know, Coraline Monte Cristo, Coraline H. Upman, Coraline Romeo and Juliet, you know, it, it, it's just not going to work, you know, it, it'll, it'll lose. And with that, not only will, oh, these poor millionaires, I don't, I, I don't even know if people that own cigar companies are billionaires, okay, I'm sure they're, they're well off, they make good money in good form, because this is a lot of work and they deserve it, okay, but um, I don't know if even like say J.C. Jay Newman, I don't know if they're billionaires. They might be. So I ain't trying to take nothing away from y'all. If y'all are billionaires, you know, that's good. Capitalist. I'm a capitalist. Um, but, you know, a tendency for blue collar guys on the ground to say, oh, fuck corporations. Okay. Well, this is going to hurt not just the consumer. It's going to hurt the corporation, but it's going to put so many people out of work. Okay. A lot of people don't understand what goes into these cigars. Okay. It's not just you know, big old combines and machinery, like tobacco gin, shooting it into a machine and rolling it. You know, these are hand planted. Okay. These are hand picked. They're hand cured. They're hand sewn. They're de-veined. Now, some companies use a de-veining machine. I saw in the documentary that uh, Pepin Garcia, he had, he says that he had the machines, but then he sold them because he had to put like 300 people out of work that do nothing all day except sit there and pull veins out of the wrapper leaves or out of the leaf. So with this, like say Esteli, Nicaragua is a freaking city that has zero unemployment. Okay. It was nothing before the cigar industry blew up. Now everybody's got a job. Okay. And it's not just the people that farm. There's the farming, there's the processing, and then there's the manufacturing. But then there's also people that take care of the children and like the, the daycare for the workers. Okay. They get a good quality daycare. They build schools. Uh, there's other businesses, satellite businesses, restaurants, grocery stores in this whole city of zero unemployment. We can't even do that in the United States. They got, you know, they're doing it down in Nicaragua, Honduras, Nicaragua. I mean, uh, Dominican Republic, you know, so it's just huge. And it's, it's heartbreaking to think that, you know, with a stroke of a pen, what the hell is the FDA doing? That's the, what is it? The Food and Drug Administration. What is it doing regulating tobacco? Now, I understand, okay? I understand the concern with marketing to kids. I don't think that they market to kids, okay? I really don't. And if, you know, they, they, I mean, they market to people with these machine-made cigars that we're, you know, these cigars are being lumped in with, with peach flavor and wine flavor and mango I don't know. They got every flavor under the rainbow. But most of those people that are buying like Philly brand cigars, they're rolling marijuana with it. Okay. And I ain't even against that. That's a whole different subject. But we, I'm going to say we are being lumped into this. Okay. And it all comes down to like, man, this is, I guess this is more of a worldwide problem, but I'm an American. Okay. And I am an American. I'm a patriotic American. And I believe in my freedom which seems like nowadays they're just trying to get more and more of our freedoms from us. But one of the, the, the you got to let people make up their own mind. Okay. And they're trying to control it. Okay. So I'm not even going to get into that debate. I'm just saying that this premium cigar industry is so far removed from cigarettes. It's so far removed from machine made cigars, you know, the black and milds, the Swisher sweets and all that so far removed from that. And it's just going to take some common sense to look at that. And I think they are, because I, I mean, I, th I think it just kind of inadvertently got lumped in there. They're not really enforcing it right now and they're, they're working on it, but 
Um, watch that uh, documentary. It's called Hand Rolled. It's on Amazon Prime is where I watched it. I had to pay. It was like five bucks, but totally worth it. It gave you a nice little history of, you know, the cigar industry when the guys had to leave Cuba and uh, start over and how cigar sales were dismal. And then, like, you know, Marvin Shankton, the guy who did uh, Wine Spectator and Cigar Aficionado, basically, I guess I would say, and I said it before I watched that, that Cigar Aficionado magazine is probably what catapulted the cigar boom and that's what they say in the, the the documentary there because that's really what got me how i got into cigars it wasn't you know i never really wanted to be i never thought about it you know i walked past a cigar store one day and i walked in i bought a cigar it was a maduro it wasn't labeled it was just a store brand and you know I grabbed a Cigar Aficionado magazine, and from there I was like hooked. Even though that cigar made me sick, I didn't know how to smoke it. You know, I didn't know how to cut it. It was, you know, the end was closed. I tried to bite it off like I saw in the cartoons and spit it out. But by reading that magazine, I got, oh man, look at this, flavors and all this. So I, I was hooked from there, okay? And hooked is not a bad thing, you know? It's like, oh, I wasn't addicted. I wasn't like, you know, selling myself for crack, you know? It's just that's how I got into it. So it takes you from there and then where it went how it took off from there okay and then it kind of died down there was another boom and you know I like to kind of say like but right now I think that we are in the golden age of cigars okay so it's already had it's been around for hundreds of years but it was this thing you know brand loyal guy smoke cigars then it hit this boom and where it's at right now I would say now is the golden age because this is where you know we're starting to get blend specifically for flavors not just strength and not just you know certain notes but actual flavors and these hybrid wrappers and all these different options you know that we have not just cuban cigars or you know you've taken uh dominican cigars and nicaraguan cigars and blend you know tobacco i mean connecticut shade connecticut broadleaf mexican sanity you know you know what i'm talking about so check out that documentary If you don't know a lot about it, if you're just getting into cigars, which is a lot of the guys that I talk to, a lot of guys that watch my channel, a lot of you guys out there, fairly new into the cigar game. And that documentary is just going to kind of bring you up to speed and uh, make you appreciate it more. And I don't know what we can do. I don't know what Laird Mayhew can do. I don't know what this channel can do. Um, but I feel like if we don't do something, if we don't try to help in some way, we're going to end up, you know, possibly in two years, three years from now, not even enjoying this anymore, you know, because we won't have access to the, these new blends of, that are, they're working on now. There's probably blends sitting in a vault somewhere that I can't wait to get my hands on. I don't even know about it. And that's what keeps me interested in cigars. And that's what keeps you coming back here. That's what keeps you texting me. You know, when you go to the, uh, you know, the cigar store and you're like, Hey man, I want to try this. I don't know if I want to spend 20 bucks on it. What do you think about it? Okay, not that I'm some kind of like Jesus of cigars, but if I've smoked it, I'm going to tell you, you know what? If you like this cigar, or if you did not like this cigar, you're probably not going to like that. I don't know. You might want to try this instead. And you know, it's the it's the it's the search for that perfect blend and that perfect hour of the day, or the perfect three hours of the day, or that long drive, or that golf game, or however it is that you enjoy your cigars the 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 end game is the same enjoyment so anyway i'm gonna leave you with that thanks for stopping by um and uh, go check that review out i mean that uh, documentary out and check out all my reviews if this if you're just clicking on this cigar sherpa laird mayhew uh check out my reviews hit subscribe like tell everybody you know we're still a small channel we're growing we're gonna get there we're gonna get there and we'll do it together so Cigar Sherpa Laird Mayhew reminding you to be polite to everybody that you meet, but always have a backup plan in case you got to shoot him in the face. And I'm out.